MIDI SID drives two SIDs. That's three voices per chip, making six voices. This is good if you're composing your own music, playing in a .mid file, which uses six channels or fewer, or if you want to play a keyboard or other controller with six note polyphony. So, it's long been a dream of mine to drive six SIDs with this. The MIDI SID Beast. With 18 SID voices covering all of the 16 MIDI channels. My original vision was to have another layer to hold the additional sound chips. Or we could extend the back. The point is that we only need one UI and one controller. But, for testing the concept, how about we take three regular MIDI SIDs, distribute the same MIDI signal to all of them, distribute the power, and mix the stereo outputs from all three. One further point about the stereo. I've slightly modified this one so that the output from both its chips appear in the centre of the stereo mix. These two are unmodified, so they each have a chip with its output on the left and one on the right. So that's an equal number of channels or voices on the left, centre and right of the stereo space. In addition to that, channel 10, the percussion, is split into three voices. After that, it took some minimal modification of the firmware, so that each MIDI SID is responding to a particular five of the channels, plus part of channel 10. So, without further ado, here is the result. We'll listen to some unmodified .mid files that use lots of channels, and then I'll talk about what I've learned, including some shortcomings that we still have even with this setup.
So the first thing I found is that a dot .mid file may have chords or arpeggios on some instruments, which mean that we may have more notes playing at once than 16. MIDI SID does allow us to choose whether to replace or arpeggiate when that situation happens, which is good because that's part of the classic sound of the 8-bit sound chip. But if this situation is going on a lot, the arpeggiation can get a bit overwhelming leaving us with stopping one note to play the next, or ignoring subsequent notes, which still leaves us with some missing sounds. A less significant shortcoming of this setup is that the mix can be off because a dot .mid file contains level information. In MIDI, each note has a velocity, and each channel ha can have a relative volume. But the SID doesn't really allow for level control of each voice. It does have an overall volume per chip, and there's a sustain element to each note's envelope, but it doesn't really give us the level of control that we need. If you're watching this before the end of June, I will be taking this setup along to Cambridge to the Centre for Computing History for their synthesised event, along with a Real64 which I'll have set up as a SID jukebox. Thank you for watching.